Dr. David Kimbrough, and Dr. Randall Hughes work to unlock the secrets of the inner tidal zone, where the land meets the sea. When the tide goes out, you can see them all. Everything is hungry. On the first day of scallop season, we take a rough paddle out to Baymouth Bar off of Alligator Point. We head out as low tide approaches to maximize our visibility. I like coming out to Baymouth Bar because it's right in my backyard, pretty much. And uh, we have assemblage of very large carnivorous snails that are the biggest, most diverse, really, sort of in the world. That diversity is what attracted legendary ecologist Robert Payne to these seagrass beds. Bob is the godfather of the way we do ecology these days. This is kind of like his proving ground, I think, where he's working out sort of the early stages of these really big ideas of transforming ecology. The horse conch eats other snails. Those snails eat snails and clams. By eating their predators, do the horse conchs benefit clams and the water filtration they provide? Does that have ripple effects to affect the clams that are in the sediments? And then the seagrass that I'm walking on here. And ultimately, does this all tie into changes that the clam farmers are seeing inside the bay here with increases in salinity that's making it harder for them to grow their clams? Perhaps these snails are helping the clams, which are then helping the seagrass, and that's helping keep the sediment in place instead of eroding and dumping in here into the inlet and closing it up and cutting off sort of the flushing of this bay. In the Grass on the Reef is funded by the National Science Foundation.